We're looking at your scatter graphs and there's a question on the right hand side we'll have a look at the moment but I'm going to talk in more general terms about scatter graphs first of all. So there are generally three types of information you get from scatter graphs but before we talk about that um, why you choose this scatter graph. The data you need if you're going to create a scatter graph is you need two variables that you feel might be connected in some way. Height and weight would be examples of that. Um, scatter graphs generally work better if you've got continuous data as well such as distances and times and weights rather than shoe sizes or hair colour. Um, so once you've created the scatter graph from your two variables you then are looking for some sort of connection between them um, and these are the types of results you might expect. If as one variable increases so does the other uh, and you'll create you'll get a series of points that look like this where they go up to the right uh, that's considered to be a positive correlation which suggests that as one quantity goes up so does the other if you get a different scenario where as one quantity increases the other one decreases then it's called a negative correlation However, you might have found that the two variables you've plotted don't seem to have any tangible connection to one another and therefore there's no correlation. I put a couple of points on the graph that don't seem to quite fit with the trend of the rest of the data. Um, this is quite deliberate and they're called outliers, uh, bits of data that don't fit with the trend. Um, and generally speaking, if you identify outliers, which you can do in a, you can do by sight at a lower level, at a higher level there are calculations you can do to determine whether points are outliers. But it's a case of whether you include them in your data or not, um, and sort of try to ascertain why they don't fit the the general trend. Other skills you may be asked to perform on a scatter graph might be um, finding a line of best fit. Once you've got established there is some kind of correlation, then you can conceivably put together a line of best fit. So we're going to do that um, with this one here at the bottom. So if I take my line, if I put in line of best fit, I generally want it to follow the trend of the line. And I want to have more or less the same amount of points on either side and none of them too excessively far away. But you'll see I'm not letting this outlier here affect uh, my line so I'm in a sense assuming it doesn't quite have as much influence on the data or it's a, it is indeed an outlier. So once I've got my line of best fit what you can then use the line of best fit for is finding information from it. So you might be given a value on the x-axis and asked to predict what or estimate what the equivalent would be on the y-axis and to do that you just need to make your way up to your line of best fit and use that as an indication of when you move across to look on the other axis. Let's have a look at how we can apply some of those skills to this graph, uh, scatter graph on the right hand side. So we've got the distance versus the tire tread and the questions ask us, um, suppose the government changes this rule from 1.6 millimeters being illegal to 2.5, how many of these tires would now be illegal? So we need to identify where our 2.5 is. And rest how many would be illegal? Um, well, that would be the number of points below that line. And that appears to be one, two, three, four, five. About how many fewer kilograms would you expect a tire to last before it was illegal? So we're going to have a look at part B about how many fewer kilometers would you expect tires last before it was illegal. Um, well let's have a look at our trend line or line of best fit. So 
So if we follow the data, roughly seems to follow that kind of line. And we'll see that if we go back to our information about uh, the 2.5, it appears that you'd expect your tires to last well, somewhere in the region of 29,000 uh, kilometers. Um, and before they became illegal. However, if we go back to the old one, which is 1.6, you can see that you'd expect your tires to last long before they became illegal. And this appears to be just over 32,000. So Roughly speaking, because we can't guarantee that our lines are that accurate, it appears that it might be around about 3,000 kilometers difference between the 1.6 millimeter legal, uh, legality and the 2.5.